students. Um, today I'm going to try something slightly different because um, you know I get good ideas on my runs. I think I, you all know that. Um, so today I was thinking on my run how I could combine the Stuff of Nonsense class or mini class today with the Writing for Children class. And partly you guys gave me the idea because of your... Um, the nonsense students in one of the classes you've been posting really interesting memories about puberty. Um, so that makes me think about stories. Anyway, because um, for the writing for children class, um, one of the things I teach the students about Alice in Wonderland, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and some of you have taken that course too, the nonsense course, is that from my point of view, and I'm not the only one who thinks this, other scholars agree, that um, the book is really about puberty and not really about early childhood, which is what most people think about Alice. Okay, so the lesson I have for you today works for both classes and I'll explain why. Okay, it's about one of the changes that happens to Alice because um, I've been telling the nonsense class that the book is about growth and that ties into the writing for children stuff too because we've been, from the picture book on, we've been looking at like your character changes, your character has to grow. So. The writing for children students, what I want to teach you about today is that you can, if even the, and for the nonsense students, just explain to you what they're up to. It might go a little longer today, but I won't worry about it. But the writing for children students are working on a chapter for a YA young adult book. Now they don't have to show the entire growth because how could they, it's just one chapter, but you should indicate something it could be in a subtle way, where we see that the character needs to grow in a certain way, right? And we could introduce that as kind of a problem, perhaps, or it doesn't have to be in a knock the reader over the head with it. Now what I'm gonna do, and then maybe show that the, that, that, that problem is a problem in the kid's life. For instance, being shy, or talking too much, or being angry. Okay, so now we're switching to the nonsense class, but it will work for the writing for children class, look at me doing my hand motions, <laughs> because it also, it's an example of exactly what I was talking about. But for the nonsense kids, this is something to look for as you're reading the book. Okay, Alice lacks tact. And the word, I don't know if it's new for some of you, tact, T-A-C-T. -T. So tact is to be tactful. And little kids don't get tact, right? That's why little kids see someone overweight and goes, mommy, daddy, why is that person so fat, right? And we go, shh, don't talk like that, don't say it. Wait, we learn as we grow up, right, to become more tactful. Now, it's very interesting. How do we learn tact? Partly it's because adults tell us, shh, don't say that, that's terrible, right? Um, we also learn through experience okay and this came up also in the in the nonsense stuff that i was reading about puberty today right learning through the experience of others super interesting okay so how does alice become more tactful and how do we know she isn't tactful okay and i'd say it's how she talks to the other animals right well she's not a she is an animal she's at the top of the chain she's human right? And for the Writing for Children course, there's a lot about Darwin and food chain and in Alice, it's all over the place. Okay, so one of the things I'd like you to look at, and this is in, for those that have the book, right? But for, if you don't have the book, don't worry about it. But there's, there's more than one example of this in the book. But in chapter two, Alice is talking about uh, her cat, and she really did have a cat named Dinah. If you want to put your real cat in the book, go ahead. Okay, so she says, she's talking to the mouse, and she says, Oh, Dinah, she's such a nice, soft thing to nurse. And she's such a, ca a, a capital one for catching mice. Capital means she's excellent. Oh, I beg your pardon, cried Alice, for this time the mouse was bristling all over and she felt certain it must be really offended. Okay, so she she's offended the mouse by talking about how great right? Uh, her cat Dinah is at killing mice. It would be like me coming in on the first day of school and saying, you know, I'm amazing at failing students. You'd all be like the mouse trembling, like, oh my God, I'm going to fail in her class. Anyway, don't worry, I'm not. <laughs> Especially this semester. Do, do your work. You'll get through. Okay. So how does Alice grow and change? Okay. And it's an encounter that she has. She grows in sensitivity because she's going to meet a creature who's going to change her sense of herself, her identity. And when she first meets this creature, it's a big 
creature to her because she's very small, right? So are you figuring it out? And those of you in the writing for children class that took nonsense, you'll figured it out. It's a puppy, okay? So you might wanna take a look just that as you're reading or rereading, have I showed you how, how frayed my book is from the many times? I really should get a new book, but mind you, who knows? Uh, I like this one. Um, so this would be, I'll read you the little section with the puppy. I just want to tell you the chapter for when you're looking at it. So we're in chapter four. An enormous puppy was looking down at her with large round eyes, feebly stretching out one paw. Poor little thing, said Alice, because she's used to being big, so she still calls the puppy little thing, okay? She tried hard to whistle, but listen, she was terribly frightened all the time at the thought that it might be hungry, in which case it would be very likely to eat her up in spite of all her coaxing. So for the first time, Alice, even though she's a human, has to be afraid that she might be devoured, right? So let's say, you know, it might be true for some of you, you were bullies. I hope you weren't, but probably a few of you were, right? You're either bullied, bullies, or the witness. But if you were the bully, you never had much sympathy for the kid that was bullied until the tables are turned and you are bullied, right? Um, thinking for me, like I've never had that much sympathy for students who, it's not nice of me to admit this, but I'm not that patient, right? So students have a lot of trouble with their, you know, thinking about a sentence or something. I'm like, oh, come on, get it already, right? But I've taken a course logic when I was at university. It was like, oh my God, I had to guess the answers on the exam. So that really sort of, I have to remember that now and then because what it's like not to be able to get something when you're used to thinking, oh, it's easy to understand things, right? Okay, so uh, we went six minutes, 53 seconds, but hopefully this worked for both classes. And tomorrow, which is already, geez, it's already Thursday tomorrow, or is it, I don't even know. <laughs> I think it's there. Yeah, tomorrow's Thursday. All right, so tomorrow you each get your own YouTube for each class, and it was fun talking to both classes today. Take care. Think about your creative projects. Think about your stories. I'm glad that the last assignments that you have for me are creative. I consider that I'm contributing to your well-being in the universe, and thank you all for contributing to the well-being of the rest of us, right, and yourself. Thanks. Take care.